Mike, you had a difficult decision to make over the weekend. Um, can you tell us what led you to that decision and obviously what you said to Kit on Sunday? Sitting down with him on a Sunday morning was, you know, was a tough thing to do and it's, you know, it, it was and it is, but it's part of the job. Um, me and Kit talked about this when I very first come to the club. You know, it, it was it was more or less let's plan for the divorce before we get married kind of conversation, which, you know, he's very mature. He's a very experienced operator. And we sat down and said, you know, at some point, you know, be it you go off to, you know, manage Wales or another club or whether you're, you know, whether we're at a point which is, which is a little bit more negative at some time we're going to have a conversation and he understood that I understood that and we've always been very open about that in our you know in our conversations so we met on Sunday morning in my office had a coffee you know reflected a little bit on what's happened over the last you know several months since I've been here and he was I, I can only say he was extremely professional about about it and I can't I can't speak highly enough on you know and how he's conducted himself up to this point Clearly, the result against Birmingham was the pivotal moment in which that decision was made. There are a couple of, of good results up until that point, obviously, notwithstanding the, the Burnley defeat in midweek. Had the result been different, would Kit still be in a job? Or was this something, a planning and a process that was in place, depending on league position right now? Well, we talked about this in the summer. Um, you know, we, we had a difficult job to reshape the, the squad. Um so we got 25 players out. We brought, you know, the 12 players in. Uh, but Kit was under no illusion as we sat and went through, you know, the first day of pre-season right the way throughout. You know, the expectations were and the discussions with um, with everybody was, let's be in the top six. You know, there was, there was, you know, there was no doubt about that. So, But given that churn of players over the summer months and given the results against the likes of Queen's Park Rangers... Reading, yeah, Reading, uh, yeah. Does that not mean, therefore, that Kip should have been given a little more time to well, make his methods work? Um, and, and that's always the difficult decision to, to make, to, to sit and wait. Um, and I think with this international break, having looked at the, I think the inconsistency of the players over this, this run of games, we'd set some targets collectively at the start of the season where we wanted to be after 10, 20 games. And, and it, you know, it, we picked up two great results against Reading and, and Bristol City, and we, you know, we dropped the points against Burnley, but we couldn't afford to, to drop that momentum against, you know, against Birmingham, and, you know, sadly we sat down and, I think just got to the point against Birmingham where we just thought that was the pivotal, you know, moment. We've got, thirty games left in this season, still enough to to get us back on track. So what next? For you, in terms of the way that you're going to recruit the next person to come in, the next manager of Fulham Football Club, and what is your criteria for that person? Well, our criteria, first and foremost, is we're not going for a manager. You know, we've had this discussion um, collectively as a group and, you know, with the owners, our direction, and it's just our direction, and it's it's one that clubs are increasingly looking to take, is we're focusing on a head coach. Um, is that to implement ideas on the training pitch? absolute control over everything that happens on the training pitch from from one day of the week until game day I, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding first I, I'll clarify you know the size of vast majority of championship clubs now and Premier League clubs there is so much going on the aim of the head coach is to focus on what's going on the pitch now that's not to say that the head coach isn't consulted involved in the whole process it is and there's a lot of misconceptions about this and a lot of you know mis representation of what we want the head coach to do the head coach has to be involved in the whole process and I'm going to make sure and it's my job to make sure we do that but he will a, report to you ultimately yeah. the head coach reports to you you report to Mr Khan yes okay. and my job and make this clear is to do everything I possibly can to support that head coach it will always be to question it in a healthy way um, it's not a dictatorship by me it's not um, it's not me picking the team. It's not me deciding the tactics. My job is to coordinate a strategy which does everything we possibly can to 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 maximise our resources and support the head coach. That's what I've got to do. In terms of names, I know that you're not going to give me any at all, and there is vast speculation around at the moment. So there's no point in even going into that. But from what you're saying to me, you're looking for a particular type of coach and a particular type of person to be able to implement 
your vision on the pitch to enable this football club to progress? Yes, and it's our vision. Um, this isn't just um, you know my vision. It's a vision that we've collectively come into as a club from you know Mr. Khan right the way down. Um, I think it's there's there's a lot of good people out there. There's some people in work. There's some people out of work. Um, there's a lot of interest. Um, that we have the responsibility of making sure that we're a very values-driven club, and some of the things we've talked about is, you know, culturally we we have to make sure that we bring in, in a successful head coach that we'd like to think has a proven track record of being able to succeed, um, but also at the same time fits into the you know the values and and the direction strategically that we want to go as a club, and ultimately that's about getting back into the Premier League. So. Ultimately, getting the right person for the job is the key aim of you working very closely with Mr. Khan. What kind of timescale are we putting on this? The international break gives us the, um, the luxury of two weeks. Um, I met with the players yesterday morning, addressed the players, told them it's business as normal. Nothing detracts from the professional focus that we have over this next two weeks. Um, a head coach could be in this weekend. A head coach might take a little bit longer. But we've got more than enough professional experience in the in the building to see us through if we need to. But ideally, we'd like to have someone in time for MK Dons. And if not, would that be Alan Kirbishley in the dugout? Would that be Peter Grant in the dugout? Or We have a lot of really good operators um, in the organisation that are very professional in how they conduct themselves and what they do. And if we have to go into the next match within a you know within a caretaker situation that we're prepared for it so we get the right person to make sure we make the right decision at the right time thank you for talking to us mike thank you